Hey everyone, I'm Sahiti from Edureka and welcome to this interesting tutorial on Spring Boot REST services. So thank you all the attendees for joining in today's session. Before we get started, all of you just give me a quick confirmation on the chat window whether I'm audible or not. Okay, I've got a yes from Sonia, Rahul, Aman, Pooja and I've got a few more yeses too. So that's great. Let's get started. Let's start by looking into what we're going to cover in today's session. We will start by knowing what exactly REST is and then list the REST constraints. After that, I will tell you the principles of RESTful services and then deep dive into how do we set up RESTful services in Spring Boot applications. So is the agenda clear to everyone? Okay, I've got a yes from most of you. So let's get started now. So what exactly is REST? Well, REST is the abbreviation for representational state transfer. RESTful web services are built to work best on the web. So did you get an idea what REST is? Let me define it for you. REST is an architectural style that specifies constraints such as uniform interface that if applied to a web service induce desirable properties such as performance, scalability and modifiability. So this means that REST is a set of constraints that you need to avail and once a service avails to this constraints it is called a RESTful service. Coming to the REST architectural style, data and functionality are considered resources and are accessed using uniform resource identifiers. The resources are then acted upon by a simple set of well-defined operations. The REST architectural style constrains an architecture to a client-server architecture and is designed to use a stateless communication protocol, typically HTTP. In the REST architecture style, Clients and servers exchange representations of resources by using a standardized interface and protocols. So, at the end, you can understand that the REST APIs communicate between the clients and the databases. So, what exactly are these REST constraints? Well, the first one is the client server. This means that you should have a client and a server. That is, there should be a service provider and a service consumer. The next one is that you should have a uniformed interface. So, you should know the functionalities of the application, you should know the resources required, and then you have to decide on how to expose them out. The other things are the services should be stateless, and also they should be cacheable, that means that the values returned should be stored in cache. And the last constraint that I would like to mention is that it should be a layered architecture. So basically, client should not assume to get a direct connection to the server. So now that you know the rest constraints, Let's deep dive into what are the principles that encourage RESTful applications to be simple, lightweight, and fast. RESTful web service exposes a set of resources that identifies the targets of interaction with its clients. Resources are identified by URIs which provide a global addressing space for resource and service discovery. The second thing is that resources are manipulated using a fixed set of create, read, update, and delete operations. So the put creates a new resource which can be then deleted by using the delete. Get retrieves the current state of a resource in some representation and post transfers a new state onto a resource. Resources are decoupled from the representation so that their content can be accessed in variety of formats such as HTML, XML, plain text, PDF, JPEG, JSON and others. So metadata about the resource is available and used. For example, to control caching, detect transmission errors, negotiate the appropriate representation format, and perform authentication or access control. The final principle that I would like to tell you is that every interaction with the resource is stateless. That is, request messages are self-contained. So, stateful interactions are based upon the concept of explicit state transfer. Several techniques exist to exchange states such as URI rewriting, cookies, and hidden form fields. State can be embedded in response messages to point to valid future states of interaction. So now that you know what is REST and its principles, how do we set up RESTful services for Spring Boot application? Well, there are three steps that we will follow. First, we will set up a simple Spring Boot project using embedded Tomcat that is in the Eclipse ID. Then we will add a GET service to it. After adding a GET service, we will learn how to handle the POST service. So let's get started with it. Now, let's look into the project. We will use the concepts of customers ordering various products. So we will start by creating a get service to return what are the products a customer has ordered. Then 
we will also create another get service to retrieve the orders that is the details of the specific order for a customer so basically what i'm trying to do here is that i'm trying to get the details of a customer going for a particular product so is that clear to everybody okay i've got a yes after that i will also create a post service to register a customer for a product so let's get started now so let me just open my eclipse id so before getting into the project structure let me show you how to create a simple maven project for that you just have to go to file you have to go to new and choose maven project in the window that opens up you have to choose create a simple project and click next after that you have to fill the following such as the group id artifact id name description for your project and then click on finish this will create your maven project so now that all of you know how to create your own projects coming back to the project that i've already created let me take you to the project structure of this project so let me just open all the files okay now let's start with the customer controller.java file well this is the file which exposes the service methods such as get post put okay so sonia just asked me a question if i can just tell you guys what do these methods get post put do well get does not update anything it just gives the same results in multiple calls coming to post post creates a new resource ideally it returns a json file with a link to newly created resource i'll explain you in detail in the video now to update a known resource you have to use the put service so sonia is that clear to you okay that's great now continuing with the project structure the product.java the customer.java and the customer service.java is the main business logic for the application we're trying to implement so i would show you how does the customer service exposes a couple of methods that are consumed from the rest controller coming to the customer controller it.java it is basically for the integration test for rest services and customer controller test.java is for the unit test for the rest services and the main file here is customer service application.java which is the launcher of the spring boot application Lastly, you can see a POM file which houses all the dependencies you need to build for this project. So in this project, I'm using Spring Boot Starter Web. Okay, now that all of you are familiar with the project structure, let me get you guys into the business service for our application. As all of us know that a single application has various layers such as web, database, and business. All these layers have their own specific responsibilities that you can understand by the name. So now, let me open the customer service.java file. Well, so as all of us know that applications need data, instead of talking to a real database, I'll be using an array list, which is kind of a memory data source. So now, let me explain you the business logic on which I've built this application. Well, in today's world, as all of us do online shopping, you can very well understand that a customer can order multiple products. So a product must have an ID, name, description. Similarly, a customer has an ID, name, description, and the list of products he or she has ordered. So this customer service.java file is basically exposing the methods. Let me brief you a little bit about the methods. So let me just scroll down. So basically, this retrieve all customers method retrieves the details of the customers. The public customer retrieve customer for a specific ID retrieves a specific customer details. This particular method retrieves all the products a customer has bought. Scrolling down. Okay, so this method retrieves details for a specific product a customer has bought. And finally, if a product has to be added to an existing customer, then this method is required. So, well, these are the methods that we have. We also have some entities such as product.java and customer.java. So, when I open this product.java file, I can see that the product is nothing but a simple object which has ID, name, and description. Coming to the second entity, customer is also an object which has ID, name, description, and also customer has a list of products he or she has bought. Coming back to this customer service file, all it does is it initializes the list of products. Let me just explain you the code now. So we start by using a simple static array list to store our data to keep it simple. So basically, we're storing all the list of products here. We are creating this application for five simple products and two customers buying those products. So we have product 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and Payal and Neha buying those products. Other than that, we also have some few important methods that I told you previously. So let me just scroll it down for you. So we have a method to retrieve all the customers, to retrieve a specific customer for a product, 
to retrieve all the products that we have and also to add products. So let me just tell you that all of these are very simple methods that we have created for our service. Now question comes, why have we created these methods? Well, the answer to this question is that we just want to use these methods from the controller. So now that we have our business logic ready, which is very important to us, is everybody clear with it? Okay, I've got a yes from most of you. That's great. So now coming to the main concept, how and where should we add our get service? So to add a get service, you just need to add add the rate rest control annotation, which is used to expose the rest services. So let me just open the controller file and show you. Okay, so this controller file will expose our rest services as this annotation is included here. So now if you scroll down this file, you can see a couple of get methods. Well, let me tell you the meaning of all these methods. Look at the first method, which says customers, customer ID, products. So basically slash customers is the part we are using and the one in the flower bracket that is the customer ID is the path variable. So you can see that the path variable is mapped to the customer ID. So if I say suppose customers slash customer one that I'm talking about customer one and want to get the list of products that customer one has ordered. Similarly, if you go to the second method that is the customers customer ID products and product ID. You can see that this method is used to retrieve a specific product for a specific customer. One interesting fact that I would like to tell you is that we have used the annotation at the rate auto wired. What does it mean? Why are we used? Well, in detail, you can refer to my previous video on Spring Boot tutorial, but let me just brief you a little bit about it. Well, at the rate auto wired annotation is used to auto wire in the customer service. So now if you just want to check whether the service is working or not, let's just launch this application. So let me just right click on this project, go to run as and choose Spring Boot app. Well, at the end of the console, you can see that Tomcat has started on port number 8080 and the customer service application has started. So now to check if your application is working or not, open the browser and type localhost colon 8080 slash customers. Suppose if you want to check for customer one, given the parameter as customer one and map it to products. Okay, so on the screen, you can see the details of products that customer one has bought. So have you all just thought, how are we getting the output as JSON file when we just listed the data as a list? Well, this happens because of something known as message converters. So Spring Boot has this thing called auto configure through which it configures many message converters. So message converters basically look at the request and identify what exactly client is looking for. So if a client is looking for JSON file, then the message converter would convert this Java object product to a JSON file. Now let me just tell you that the message converter is auto registered with the Spring Boot. Okay, so the post method that I mentioned in the starting of the video. Well, I told you that we use it to create a new resource. So just in case if I have to create a new resource for this application, I'm going to post map and map the URL to it. So what does this post mapping do? So post mapping would be to expose this as a post request and path variable is mapped to it. Now one more thing that you can see here is the request body product new product. So whatever product you would put in the request body would be automatically bound to here. So when you execute the request, we will put the details of the product in the body of the request and then the request gets bound to the request body. Once the product is found, the location of the product is printed. But if the product is not found, then it returns none. So guys, that's all for today's session. I hope it was informative. If you want Edureka to cover any other topic, please mention in the comment section below. Thank you and have a great day. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!